Hello, my dark darlings. I've had a lot of time on my hands lately, and luckily, I've enjoyed spending part of that time with best fiends. I've been playing this cute puzzle game for a while now, and one of the things I love about it is that the longer I play, the more challenging and fun it gets. It's a casual mobile game that's a joy because along with the super cute bug characters, it tests you by employing more strategy the higher in levels you go. So it's always unique and entertaining. In fact, Best Fiends updates the game monthly, so each month you can look forward to new levels plus monthly themed challenges. I love that it doesn't require internet to play. So when my internet is going unbearably slow, I can still take a quick break, whip out my phone and enjoy some puzzles whenever I want. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Hey, I'm Marquia. Wanna hear something scary? The Oath. Promises are supposed to be binding. When you make a promise, do you follow through with it? Because beware, promises can be slippery things. They're really only as good as the person who makes them with you. Caitlin and her twin boys, Noah and Lucas, moved into a new home across the country. It was old, massive, intimidating, but the deal was too good to pass on. When the real estate agent handed over the keys, she looked relieved. I wish you and your boys luck. Hopefully you're the last owners, she said jokingly. Caitlin asked what in the world she meant by that. The agent said it was just real estate humor and quickly left. The move was hard on the twins. They had to make new friends and go to a new school. Plus, people at their new school were weird towards them. Most of the time, the other kids avoided them. The boys would hear whispers behind their backs like, I wonder how long they'll last. But it wasn't a big deal to Lucas and Noah. They were each other's best friends. They spent days exploring their new big house, getting to know every room, all the nooks and crannies. Then, in the attic, they found something hidden away. A large, beautiful, ornate mirror. Noah, a fan of antiques and history, loved it and immediately asked their mom to put it in his room. But Lucas, Lucas hated the thing. He didn't know why, but just looking at the mirror, let alone into it, filled him with dread. That night, Noah startled awake. In his dream, he had heard someone calling for help. Awake, he caught a glimpse of movement out of the corner of his eye. He sat up in bed, staring at his own startled reflection in the mirror. Wait, there was something wrong with the reflection. Noah got out of bed, walking slowly towards the mirror. He tried to figure it out. Closer now, he realized the room was wrong. Run down, filled with shadows. The sheets on his bed were dark with, was that blood? Then again, someone called for help. It was coming from the mirror. Suddenly, there was a bang on the mirror. Within the mirror, a hand whacked on the surface again. Noah stood shocked as a young, terrified boy stepped in front of him. Encased in the mirror's reflection, the boy cried out, Help us, please. You have to get us out of here. It's in here and it won't stop. Help me. And reached his hands out. Instinctively, Noah reached back to help, but as his palm touched the mirror surface, a demonic creature stepped into frame, pushing the little boy aside. Its talons pierced the surface of the mirror and grabbed Noah by the wrist. It laughed as it yanked him into its depths. The next day was Saturday. Caitlin hummed while she made a chocolate chip pancake breakfast. She liked to give her family a treat before they'd all clean the house together on Saturdays, but only Lucas sat down to eat. They called out for Noah. There was no answer. They searched his room, then all over the house. Caitlin began to get frantic, and then they heard Noah crying. It was coming from his room. Shocked, they saw Noah in the reflection, curled up, sobbing loudly in a corner. They banged on the glass, but he didn't respond. Caitlin left to get a hammer. She didn't know what was going on, but she'd get her baby out of there. Lucas waited alone in the room for his mother to return. Suddenly, a voice spoke from the mirror. Do you miss your brother? Come here. 
Come in here, Lucas, and get him. Heading back to the room with her hammer in hand, Caitlin felt something was wrong. A deafening silence filled the house. Seized with terror, she ran into Noah's room. It was empty. Running over to the mirror, she saw both of her boys huddled with each other. The mirror demon stood over them like a carrion of death. Give me back my children, she screamed. Come here and get them. It mocked. Caitlin rushed towards the mirror. Days later, the real estate agent dropped by, quietly letting herself into the house. She walked through the rooms until she found the mirror. Looking into the mirror, she saw blood splattered in the room and one of the boys, it was either Lucas or Noah, she couldn't tell the twins apart, curled up in a corner. Tearing up, the real estate agent whispered to the mirror, is it enough yet? Please, were they enough? Can I have my little boy back now? Previously, after she had discovered that she couldn't destroy the demon's mirror or get it out of the house, she had tried to hide it. But no matter where she put it, the next family always seemed to find it. Emily. The mirror demon whispered back to her. I need one more, one more family. No. Emily broke down crying, screaming that the mirror had promised that before. The mirror smoothly answered, you can get me another family, Emily. Or you can come here, come in here and get your son. Using Caitlin's signature and information, Emily put the house up for sale again. It didn't take long for new buyers to come by. It never did. Not at the price she listed the house for. A happy family with four kids. When she handed over the keys, her stomach dropped. But she had to hope that this time, it would really be the last family that this time she'd be able to bring her son home. Come check out Digital Me and the Snarled Clubhouse on Popbase. It's totally free and your place for some exclusive behind the scenes content from Something Scary. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast. Available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. Thank you to all of our patrons. While we do run a limited amount of ads, the show would not be possible without your support. If you want to keep these videos coming, please visit patreon.com snarled. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, my dark darlings. Sweet dreams.